Hi, Jack Tullius here with Black Bart, and uh, we're sitting in beautiful San Salvador, Bahamas. Fantastic place for, for Oahu fishing. I mean, we get so excited about this place because of the potential for uh, a world record uh, is here, and any time through uh, October through February, you never know what's going to show up behind the boat. And it's just exciting. I mean, these these fish, you, you really don't want to come here and fish with 30 and 50 pound class tackle. What we fish with here is 130 pound class tackle. It gives us plenty of line capacity, unlimited class rods, because these fish here are huge. Now, typically when we're fishing, if it's early in the season, something like that, we'll run our smaller baits. Uh, Rum K candy, San Sal candy, both of them a little bit smaller, anywhere from 9 to 12 inch baits. But when we're here in this special place where anything can happen, we don't want to take any chances. So for here we run larger baits like this. This is uh, one of Bart's original baits. This is the, the Wahoo candy. Bullet nose on it designed for speed. But one thing we found over the years is is the only way that you could with this type of design to go faster what would happen is this rounded nose would create lift the faster you go. What guys tried to do is they tried to compensate for that lift by making them heavier and heavier. What we actually did being old airplane guys is we came up with a design with an inverted nose. So actually this will drive it down into the water, keep it, keep it lower in that strike zone versus something rising up. It allows us to have options of running it with weight, without weight, and so there's a lot of options there. You can run lighter leads, heavier leads, depending on how deep you want to get into the water column. As you look at this lure, this one's kind of been modified a little bit. We've chopped the skirts. You can see our hook set. We use an open gap style hook. And all of our hooks that we use nowadays, we went to an actual uh, handmade Japanese hook versus the conventional mustads. We found that the strength on these hooks was excellent. Uh, never had a problem. So keep their point and excellent hooks. If you look at how we actually rig this on the larger lure, since we want to get the hook back into the skirt a little bit further, we actually take a 600 pound stainless steel cable and we do a twist from this point here to here. We twist it up, there's two crimps there, and then we take a clear shrink and then cover that. Um, pretty simple process. If you look at how we also have our hook lock in the back, and those of you that uh, run our lures, you know that's there. The whole purpose is to lock the hook in an up position. The hook acts like a rudder, as well as when that fish comes in to strike, when the hook's in an up position, it increases the odds of hooking the fish in the upper part of the jaw, where all the structure is, versus the lower part of the mouth, and easier to pull the hook. So to position this hook, all I do is I pull it into the crimp lock just like this. I take the lure in hand and I turn the hook, aligning it with the center of the insert. And then once I've got it, I'm satisfied with that, I kind of look at it, I hold it like this and make sure the alignment's good. I could do any kind of fine adjustment right here and we're good to go. Now you'll also notice that the cable's coming out of the front of this lure. These wahoo are pack feeders and what happens is when that wahoo comes in hard and fast there's a good opportunity that it could miss the lure. If this was a mono leader it could hit up in here and their teeth are so sharp they would slice right through the leader. So what we do is we run this approximately a foot to a foot and a half past the lure and out the front of the nose. So if you're looking at it and you say, well, you know, if a little bit's good, maybe more is better. Well, what happens is when that fish takes off and the hook comes loose, if this lure slides up past the body of the fish, the potential, since Wahoo are pack feeders, 
the potential for another fish to come in there and chop you off is even greater. So we only want to go about a foot to a foot and a half, you know, outside of the head, so outside of the lure. So this does, uh, does not go past the body of the fish. So that's our rigging. You'll notice that the lure is pretty good size. Here's the original. Here's the Crooked Island candy. And you'll notice the only thing we did here was invert the nose on it. And this will allow us to go at a little bit faster speed without the use of a lot of weights. In fact, when we're fishing here, we don't run a lot of lines. I mean, we can barely handle three lines when they're all going off. And if you can imagine them going off with uh, fish the size of 80 to 150 pound fish taken off, uh, you got your hands full. So we've just run three lines and simply rig them just like this. And of course for the very big girls, we've kind of gone to a style like this. This is our Brazil Pro Jet. And as a matter of fact, this Pro Jet we make in six sizes, but we like the big one for the mass that it has. It's, it's a big head. We'll run this on a 48 ounce weight. Again, single hook rig. You know, a lot of guys like doubles, but uh, you know, I just don't want to get my hands near a, a, one of those Wahoo's mouths. So, you know, single hooks are easy. The hookup ratio is great because the fish are coming in fast. And uh, we'll just chop the skirts back a little bit. There you see the hook just past the edge of the skirts. So it runs perfectly just like that. And of course, I don't know, we've just found that uh, bigger baits are bigger fish. I know everybody says, hey, elephants eat peanuts, but, but uh, you know, it's just hard to attract those elephants with gnats. So if you kind of look at this one, this one got a little practice with us today. Uh, as you can see, this is tore up pretty good. Uh, we, we call this uh, the pumpkin spot, and as you can see, it's, it's uh, you know, guys sometimes pick out colors. Uh, it's, it's Bart was right all along. It's all about movement. You'll notice this one has some tape on it. We just did a field repair, and this is a, you know, if you're out there fishing, you don't have another hook set to put in, it's tore this up. Don't throw it back out, all tore up. Go ahead and grab, have some electrical tape, tape that down, make sure it's a nice stiff connection, and again, make sure that you turn your hook in an up position and you're running it just like that. Of course, this one's going to have to be reskirted today. <laughs> but uh, good problems to have. You know, when it comes to what kind of gear, we're running the larger tackle. And here's our main line. We have, uh, we're running 130 pound class line. And then our main line here, this is a 530 mono. Nice loop there, and then we have a crimp protector over this. So when you reel this up to the tip, you don't want to damage your tip. Big uh, ball bearing snap, and you want to make sure that it's ball bearing. And then we have that to a uh, Mamoy Escape Proof. Works very well with us. Some guys like conventional snaps. Some guys don't like to snaps at all. They'll just crimp everything on. But uh, we have a tendency to change out leads and things like that if something gets damaged. You can see here that the Wahoos really like to hit the leads. You'll notice here where the teeth marks all over this. And we also, we build our own lead. So what we like to do is again, the same type of thing with the cable. We run a piece of cable about six to eight inches out of each side. This is not molded in, so we like this to be able to turn if a Wahoo hits it. The, mold, the molded ones kink all up, so we like this, this method a lot. Again, we come in with our escape proof ball bearing snap, and that's connected to 20 feet of, of shock leader. So simply we take our main line, connected with a snap here, out the other side connected with a snap to our shock leader and from our shock leader we go directly to the lure. Pretty simple process. Oh, one other thing that you want to do once you're done at the end of the day, make sure you pull that hook set free 
and rinse down through the lure. Get all the salt and everything out of it. Spray through the back, back here through the back hole. Get it all out of there. So thanks again for watching. We'll uh, pick up some Wahoo and show you some action a little bit later on.